As you'd expect at Car Advice, we love the latest and greatest and the most high-tech gadget that we can get our hands on. We want the newest technology, we want the most features packed in, we want the latest and greatest of everything. However, rushing out and being an early adopter and the first to buy something isn't always the smartest option. Now, Tony, you're obviously a fan judging by that T-shirt and you've got a compelling reason as to why rushing out to buy the first of something isn't always the smartest option. You're right, mate. I'm a big fan. I learned to drive on a Series 1 of these and I bought one of the first disco sports to arrive in the country, but it had the old 2.2 litre clattery diesel, whereas the new one has the 2 litre Ingenium engine, which is more refined and a lot quieter. So I feel like I've missed out. Look, I've got to say, Tony, I think it's a little bit cheeky to release an entirely new platform, a wholly redesigned vehicle with an old engine. You're absolutely right. If I'd have waited just seven months, I would have got the car I wanted, the good looking disco sport with the good engine. Now, Tone, you obviously like the look of the Discovery Sport. I mean, you bought one, yeah. but how would you describe the external styling of it? Brilliant, mate, because the current designer at Land Rover, the guy by the name of Jerry McGovern, and he yeah. has not put a foot wrong. New Range Rover, Range Rover Sport, Discovery Sport, next up Discovery. So what you get with a Disco Sport is you get a nice blend of Range Rover Sport inside a $55,000 vehicle from 55 grand. So that's the reason this car's been such a popular buy. That's true, and it has to be said that while the black paint of our test example isn't the best way to showcase the exterior styling, it looks fantastic when you choose the right colour. One thing's for sure though, this vehicle is an enormous step forward from the Land Rover Freelander that it replaced. Well mate, I drive mine all the time as you can imagine, so I'd like to hear your impressions of the car, so you hop in, drive me around, that'd be great. Sure. Now Tone, most Discovery Sport owners, let's be honest about this, don't actually take their expensive SUV off-road. I mean, they talk about it, but they don't actually do it, do they? No, well you wouldn't mate, it's 65,000 bucks plus for the average purchase price of a Discovery Sport. You don't want to scratch up your, your prestige vehicle, but Land Rover, like all Land Rover makes, models, they all say that they're the best in class. So they're, they're more than capable of going off-road, and what about this dirt road now? Well, regardless of the fact that this is capable off-road, I'd suggest that if you were going to do any serious bush bashing, you'd buy one of the best SUVs around, which is the Land Rover Discovery. However, having said that, people reckon that this is capable off-road, so let's trundle over a corrugated dirt road to just see how this feels yeah. on what we'd call a common dirt track. It's a bit surprising. I've, just to get here, I drove about 16 k's on some dirt roads like this. What I noticed is all the little sharp stones and bumps, you don't really feel them. No. Uh, this car rides on all weather tyres, so they've got a bit more tread than the average road tyre, so it can deal with this sort of stuff, but you don't really feel each and every bump that you go over, so it's gliding over some of this stuff, and I think that's all you want in a vehicle like that. This cabin's quite refined, and I'm genuinely surprised by how insulated it is. It really is, mate, and that also comes down to that new Ingenium engine we talked about earlier. It's a lot less intrusive than the average diesel engine being a two litre displacement, which is a small displacement engine, but you don't get that clatter, and that's one of the big things with a diesel engine. You want it out. So we know that this is capable of doing what most people will do off-road, which is pretty much a basic track like this one. So. The main game is on the sealed stuff, yeah. so let's head for some bitumen and yeah. take a look at that. I have to say, mate, that the same things that impressed us on the dirt yeah. are true here. This engine is extremely refined and quiet, and just have a listen to the cabin. The ambience in here is incredible. I There's agree, this is probably the worst uh, road service Coarse you chip. Get. Coarse yep. chip. Um, you don't hear a lot of that course chip, nor do you feel it. That's the main game. You just glide along, you don't got, you? You do glide along. I mean, it really, really is impressive, Trent. Um, and this engine, like you said, most two-litre diesels, the two-litre diesel I know in the X3 is a bit noisier, yeah. a bit more clattery. Yeah. They really took a big step forward, not only with Freelander to Discovery Sport, but with the normal 
or the old 2.2 litre diesel down to the smaller displacement 2 litre diesel, which is refined, more responsive. Yep. There's still a bit of turbo lag as you get with a with a if low dis with yeah, a small you, displacement. Yeah, that's diesel. right. If you really push it, you get a bit of if lag. If you punch then, yeah. it, you've got to learn to feed in the power easily, which is a better way to drive anyway, more efficient. I'm impressed though with how effortless this engine seems yeah, to be. It's really quiet, is. but it, it doesn't feel like you really have to work it too hard to just do normal speeds like we're doing. Well, I'm telling, I'm telling, telling you now that coming down here at 110, almost all the way, the, the, there's almost no noise. The yeah. engine's not working very hard at all. And it does, like you said, glide along the bitumen. Just you know? really, really comfortable experience. Yeah. And I don't know, you've, you've probably driven it enough now to realise that the car, it, it's a very good chassis yeah. in terms of body control. It is, yeah. You're not, it's not like you're driving, you know, a reasonable size SUV. You've got a command position, you're quite high up. This Always. is a really, really graphic example of what we're saying, that a slightly improved engine makes a big difference to the whole package yeah. and just makes it more enjoyable to drive. Now, before we get to how the interior is executed and the way it's finished, just generally looking around, I can see a lot of positives inside this cabin. So Tony, as an owner, what makes this Discovery Sport so practical inside? Well, mate, on price, it competes with the BMW X3 and the Audi Q5. None of those vehicles offer a seven seat option or a third row option. Big this plus. does, huge plus. Yep. So we're talking about the interior space for yep. adults and for kids and for people in general. But looking around here, I can see bucket loads of storage everywhere that yeah, you look. Absolutely. But I know that you surf, yeah. and how do you go fitting your surfboards in here? I'll tell you what, my daughter rides a 9.4 Mal. Yep. We've got a 9.4 Mal in here. It goes up to the windscreen, but mm. you can get one in without having to have roof racks. Well, big plus. Yeah. It's also got a bucket load of USB They're ports. They're everywhere. There's two one, up, one there. One up here. There's one in one here. In the two, two out. Yeah, two two out at the back. back. Nine volt charging everywhere. Yeah. Big plus is that the second row seats has a big range of slide to it. So mm. slide it all the way back, which is how you drive the car normally. Mm. And there is a ton of leg room. Yeah. For you, you're over six foot. Yeah, look at that. You're okay with Heaps headspace. Headroom, yeah, yeah. You can fit a six foot four guy in here, no yeah. problem. Easily. Again, very practical. Mm. What I wanted to say is the front seats are exceptional comfortable. They really are, even over longer distances. Yeah. And I guess that brings us to the next point, which is, before we talk about the execution of it, do you have any gripes about how, about the interior? I do, mate. For a $75,000 drive away car, which yeah. mine is, some people have gone even higher than that, mm. the HSE Sport Luxury. Um, I don't think it quite has a premium look about it, yeah. compared to, say, an Audi, mm. even the Q2 Audi, which is coming out later on this year. Mm. Uh, that has it's very dark, very dark. Yeah, not quite enough. I won't say bling, but look, there is metallic accents there, and they're quite nice. Mm. The features are nice, but there's just not enough of it. This is a little bit of the way it's executed. Yeah, absolutely. And I also noticed on on the list of things that we're not happy with, when we were keeping our cameraman prisoner in that third row back there, yeah. we couldn't release the seats remotely, no. which makes things a little bit for the second row. Yeah. Which makes things difficult when you're storing for the back, you know. Yeah. Look, I, I was raving about the attention to detail with all the USB ports. Mm. But that's a, that's an oversight. Yeah. Right? You, you do need to be able to either electrically flip or yeah. manually flip a seat from the rear. Particularly if you're loading a surfboard in there, you don't want to have to lay it down, mm. risking the thing falling off the back, mm. hitting the concrete, mm. when you should be able to just flick them and they should just fold down quite easily. We, we'd have to say though that while this isn't perfect inside the cabin, uh, it's beautifully executed in terms of how quiet it is, how refined yeah. it is, it's insulated. You don't hear a lot of road noise. No. So it's, you know, that, that's got to be made yeah. a point of as well, hasn't it? It's a big it? plus and that, that's where it does deliver a mm. premium experience yeah. behind the wheel. So while the Disco Sport isn't perfect, it's a very, very practical five or seven seat family SUV and it does that very well. Yeah. So just quickly here in the second row, as Tony was saying, we've got two USB ports and a 12 volt charger down there, so you can keep the kids happy in the second row. These seats, I mean, have a look how much room we've got here. Tony's sitting there behind my driving position, heaps of room. 
our seats move forward and back sliding uh, on a 60-40 split, which is great. You've got individual air vents here, still a whole heap of headroom as well, LED lighting, and these extremely robust door handles that feel like they're actually carved from steel. Thud that door closed. I don't reckon they could have done a bit better than a piece of netting. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. Yeah, there, isn't it? That's yeah. not great. And the, and the plastic back of the yeah. seat feels a little cheap. Yeah. But in terms of accommodation back here, it's pretty good. incredibly comfortable. So there's no doubt then, Tony, that you probably jumped the gun a little bit. Maybe you should have waited until this engine in the new platform came out. Yeah, 100%, mate. There's nothing wrong with the way my 2.2 litre diesel works. Still plenty of punch, but it's a lot noisier and nowhere near as refined as that one. So there you have it, guys. It's a message in there for people who want to rush out and be an early adopter that they're not always the smartest people in the room. Sometimes holding back a little bit and waiting for the second generation or the update to come out is actually the smartest option.